This series of tapes, Inflammation vs. Misformation, were recorded from classes given this year by Dr. Malachi Z. York, known to us as the Supreme Grandmaster Naya Malachi Zodok L., our own Pharaoh, Amanubi Ruakatar. And now, listen with an open mind and heart as our Grandmaster inflames you with only the truth. Allow your inner light to flow again and stomp out misformation with only the facts. And now, listen to the Supreme Grandmaster, Naya Malachi Zodok L. We're coming back to our land as your Massey. Native Americans, this is our land. We know the battles of Millersville. We know when it took, when it exchanged hands. We have the documents, the deeds, and the treaties to prove who we are. Certain people there know where we're coming from. The small-minded have no clue what's really going on. They think a group of people just moved down here with a radical religion. Other people understand that Bush put into effect the indigenous law from 1992 to the year 2000. And the indigenous people then have the right to step forth. Our relatives up in the Ma up in Massachusetts, or the Massachusetts Indians, or the Pico Indians, have already fought up there, and we got our rights. Out in the plains, we just fought, uh, and now they had to bring in ten thousand bison, or they had to put the buffalo back in the plains because we won out there. You follow? And they're going to have to learn to accept that we are here. We are the Native Americans. There's a difference between a Native American and an American Indian. Get that to your head. A Native American, uh, uh, you people with dark skin and woolly hair. An American Indian are those people who were here, came in when the Chinese came over here, and that's why the strongest stronghold of China and the oldest population of China anywhere outside of Asia is in California. Because they migrated over here, and when they stiffed us, they became what you see today as American Indians. If you look at any American Indian, you're looking at an African and a Chinese mix. Then later, East Indians moved across the Barren Strait and came down and mixed in again and produced what you see today with two grains. We are the indigenous people. It's on record. The descriptions are on record. We still we have all the paperwork in place. So there are people there that realize the reality of what they in time they're in. I'm not interested in your emancipation proclamations. I'm not interested in your reparations. You can't pay me for what you did to my people. You can't pay us. And I'm not talking, and I'm not talking about black people. So we was on the trail of tears. We were all mixed up. We were racist, all mixed up. They came down on everybody that got involved. You understand? You had an aristocratic family that came out of Ireland, came out of Britain, came out of France, that was trying to take the wealth of this country. You know what I'm trying to say? And so we are at a point now where we have rights, not rights we ask for. There's a word called autonomy. There's a thing called indigenous, sovereign. All of those things are in, and we just never use them because of fools like Farrakhan who keep directing us in the directions of Saudi Arabia or to that fool Gaddafi. We have fools who keep on pulling us away from reality. Got to make you think you're an African. So you don't realize that you're all a Native American. And that you were already here. Not that, not that nobody here didn't come from Africa. Yeah, there was an African slave trade. But not everybody here is from Africa. We are all a different tribe that was already on the shore when Christopher Columbus came but didn't step on the land. You follow? And sent in Peter Negreto to speak to the people. And sent in Yahuda, a Jew spoke Aramic and Arabic to speak to the people who they met when they stepped on the shore. When, it was, when they came here, the people were speaking Arabic. You can check the history of Ben York, find out his father's son, brother's name was Jupa. They have it on record in Tennessee. Jupa. Jupa is a Moorish word meaning well. His sister's name was Nancy, my grandfather's sister. We have the deeds, the records, the proof, where they went, where they traveled, and how they say they never freed Ben York, and we, Lewis did free Ben York. And we also got the deed to show that you as Moors do not fall under Jim Crow law. You do not fall under Negro law. You do not fall under the Emancipation Proclamation law. You have nothing to do with any of the laws that there are bills or rights that they're passing for Negroes. It has nothing to do with you. You lose it when you become a Christian. You lose it when you become an Israelite. You lose it when you become a Mohammedan. 
because then you fall from fact into fiction. There's no historical facts anywhere that there ever was a man named Jesus 2,000 years ago. There's no facts. And they will take you back to the Talmud and say that's a fact, and that's not a fact. There's no proof. So when you start aligning yourself with fictions, then you can't claim your sovereignty. When you give people facts, and listen, I understand Christianity is a very beautiful thing if it's practiced properly. It's a nice organization. You follow? But it has no origin with facts. It's just like the Boy Scouts of America. If the Boy Scouts of America exists for 2,000 years, it might become a religion. In fact, John Coltrane and Elvis Presley have been declared religions this year. That's a fact. And uh, you better bet Jimi Hendrix will be a religion in a couple more years. And 2,000 years from now, Elvis Presley will become a Jesus Christ. And that would be attributing miracles to him and all the things that you cannot prove. You with me? But when it comes down to talking to people straight up, eye to eye, go straight up, deal with the facts. You got to give them back all the crap. Islam, Christianity, Judaism is all part of the crap. I'm not telling you not to believe that there's a spiritual savior that's not going to... If you need that kind of stuff, if you're, if you're an anticipator, if you're an... <laughs> you like to sit around and anticipate the miracle instead of making it happen, well, you keep sitting and anticipating it. If you're an expector, if you're like the Muslims who is expecting the Mahdi, or the Christians that's expecting Jesus, or the Jews is expecting the Messiah. If you want to sit around expecting when you better and when you can get up and make it happen yourself, then you keep on expecting. But Nawapo ain't gonna be doing that with you. We stopped waiting. We stopped believing. You know what I mean by that? You had us believing a lot of crap that didn't happen. Yeah, my great grandmother and everybody believing Jesus was gonna come, and on those presents they took the abuse. They didn't bother to look any further. The key is a belief system. You understand that? A belief system. If I can get you trapped in a belief system, then I can get you to believe anything about anybody. The moment you give back a belief system for facts, then when they say, well, Elijah Muhammad had sex with all of his secretaries, you want facts. I don't want to hear it. I, don't, I want you to put, give me some facts, prove it. You know what I'm saying? When you're Jimmy Schreier to so-and-so, I want proof. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Give me some proof. It's in the Bible. Not that. You all wrote that. Give me some proof. I want to hear it from another organization or another denomination of people that existed beside them. You know what I don't want to hear the Muslims' interpretation of Muhammad. That was 1400 years ago. Give me another group of people who were living 1400 years ago who were literate and I want to hear them tell me the story of Muhammad, his miracles. Why is it that you can't find nobody else on the planet verifying Jesus' miracles but those who believe in him? Quite simply because you can make up anything amongst your own family, about your relatives, especially if it's going to become internationally profitable and give you the power to tell everybody to turn the cheek while you slap the hell out of them. That's a very convenient doctrine. And we believed it. We took the abuse through, through the kidnapping, which they call slavery. And I repeat for all the new folks here, stop calling it slavery. The reason why I say don't call it slavery is because you cannot petition the international courts for the torture and abuse if you keep referring to it as something like slavery, Slavic. You have to refer to it as I was kidnapped. Stop calling it police brutality. It's called torture. That can be found on documents. Police brutality is not on documents. Torture is. Physical abuse over an extended period of time is called torture. What just happened to that young man in New York City, the Haitian brother, is torture. Did anybody, did anybody here miss what they did last week? Well, I'm not going to repeat it. That's how disgusting it is. You follow? And they got fired. They should have got set on fire. If this was according to... No. If this was according to their own evil periods, these police officers would have been set on fire for the 
for the, the sodomy acts that they performed on this, this individual in the police department in New York City. He would have been best with that's what fire means. Set on fire. You follow? But that's called torture. Rodney King was not a product of police brutality. That's why he lost it. He should have petitioned through the people, the indigenous people of the world, international courts in Geneva under torture. And everybody saw him being tortured. You understand? There's no such thing as resisting arrest. There's no law as resisting arrest. They created it. And that's why whenever you get arrested for resisting arrest, they always drop it. You've got to start studying the law. You got to understand their law versus your rights. Not the rights they give you. They can't give you anything because you were here first. You with me? You ain't got to claim nothing. It's already yours. And there's international courts in Geneva, in Belgium, people who are waiting because they know what happened. And they got records and they got deeds. And your people all over this planet right now are claiming through international, not here, their rights and getting it. The word is autonomy. You don't have to petition. You are who you are. You have to prove to me I'm an African. I don't have to prove to you I'm not a Moor. You have to prove to me I'm an African from Nigeria. Did I fall up under that? You can't do that. You can't check my blood and do it. You can't check my hair texture, my skin texture, or my, my features and prove it. You follow? Because when I reach out and I grab my family, which is Latino speaking people, South America, Central America, North America, and, put, and all through the Caribbean pull us back and say, this, this is who we are. You can't tell me that all my brothers and sisters in Puerto Rico are Africans and a part of the slave trade. They won't fall under your characteristic assignments. You with me? You won't be able to do that. And the greatest fear is the awareness of the laws that govern you. That you have your own constitution. He has no idea how long we as Native Americans have been waiting to make this claim. They just don't know. We had to wait for the information, the Freedom of Information Act to be passed in order to go to Washington and into the archives and pull out documents. They thought we just were sitting around scratching our heads and listening to hip-hop music. Not all of us, some of us were waiting. I'm a grandson of Ben York, and I know what he did, how he was received, and how he was, and how he was treated. You follow? So it may not have touched you as much as it touched me. You follow that? But I followed the whole history straight on through, name by name, person by person, every event. I know know why educated Frenchmen had to use Africans as they call us to translate for them. I want to know why if I was in Virginia and I was supposed to be but dumb did you need me to take you all through this country and show you to find the waterways if I was restricted from slavery to uh, or confined as a slave in a certain environment how did Ben York know all about the country? How did Ben York speak every dialect of every Native American tribe here? How did Ben York have children amongst the Osage, the Mandan, the Seminole, the Shinnecock, the Shoshone? How did he manage to have um, children amongst every one of these tribes? And anytime you see anybody who's a Nisphere, and they write this in their own books, Nisphere means nose pierced. Sound familiar, Ansars? It was a symbol of the descendants of Ben York who were black Native Americans. And to this very day, they still exist. It's just about waiting for the key moment when, the, when nature will realign itself and make a way for us not to be as abusive to them as they were to us. My forte is, give me what's mine. That's all. And just leave me alone. If you can't live with me in peace, then leave me alone. If we can't get along, you leave me alone. I can survive without you. I survived here before you got here. I can survive without you, your man-made niggas. I can survive without them too. You know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, the paperwork is in Geneva. And the telegram came back that it's already been approved because they can't disapprove it. 
That's why you got that little newspaper in your hand. That newspaper was to put the family chart out there so you know what you're talking about. And the next newspaper will have a little more information. And each newspaper is going to have a little more information. It's free, take it, study it, and be able to defend yourself. You follow? You know, there's a, one more thing. You know, there's a big uh, cult, a tremendous cult with thousands of cult members in Atlanta right now. Did y'all know that? They are taking over Atlanta. This, this cult right here, see this cult? This cult, they're called the, uh, the ancient Arabic order of the noble mystic shrine. This cult, there's thousands of them all over Atlanta right now. I'm saying that because we're registered in the state of Georgia as a fraternity and they refer to us as a cult. So the shrine is a fraternity and they wear feathers with crescents and stars on it and they say assalamu alaikum and they wear Arab clothes and they identify with Arabia and France and Morocco. So they also must be a cult. Now I'll tell you the truth. Cult busters are bored because the 60s are gone. And they built offices and they used to go around kidnapping people who were joining the Hare Krishnas and different groups and hold them in rooms and detox them with their philosophy of Christianity. Now they're bored. So they have nobody else so they're going to now turn on fraternities and start saying fraternities are cults. That's what cult busters have to do in order to keep their rent paid. They become the, the vicars of the Middle Ages who went out looking for witches. And when they ran out of what they thought were witches, anybody who said something that sound witchy, they tarred and feathered them or burnt them. They had a dad the dassy to float a piece of wood in the water and then put the witch on it. And if the wood sunk, she was a witch. You understand? Then they took out and burnt her on a, at a stake. That's the day and time you're getting into now. That's how insecure people are becoming because you're fed up. And they want you to react like Farrakhan. They want us to run over to Libya and align ourselves with some fanatic terrorist fool like Gaddafi. I know and you know something that they don't seem to recognize. If Farrakhan has been recently accepted by the Muslim world, correct? I know and you know that's crap. We know it because one of the schools in our fraternity and sorority is the study of Islam. That's one of the degrees we study thoroughly in Arabic. Am I right? Now, Farrakhan believes Allah is a man who came in the year 1930 named W.D. Farad, a human being. The Muslim world believes Allah is ghaybi, as they say in Arabic, unseen, conflict. The Muslim world believes the last prophet was a man named Mustafa Muhammad Al-Amin who died in the year 632 in Arabia. Farrakhan believes that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the final messenger and the Muhammad of their Quran of 1400 years ago. Conflict. Muslims fast Ramadan, the season changes. Farrakhan's followers fast Ramadan in December. Conflict. Muslims prostrate in prayer. Farrakhan's followers stand up in prayer. Conflict. The beard in Islam is called Sunnah. Muslims must wear it. The nation of Islam does not wear it. Conflict. You understand what I'm saying? There's no way the Arab world could accept Farrakhan as an imam or their brother without some underhanded slimy con game going on. But America Basic America sees the word Mohammedan or Muslim and don't have a clue because they don't bother studying other things because their Christian ministers are so intimidated by the possibility that their congregation might find the truth. They say, don't read that, don't read that. Those are heathens, those are blasphemers. They got all these screams and they're closing the minds of people. And now when something like that happens, the general public cannot see there's something going on. Something for us to worry about. I'm going to tell you why it's something for us to worry about. Because when word of D. Muhammad the son of Elijah Muhammad defected from the nation of Islam and formed this world community and joined them in with the Arab world. You know what he did? He took thousands of black Americans and gave them into the hands of a new breed of communism or terrorism called Islam. Now we can't tell where the bombs are coming from. 
Because any, any American can be souped up into believing that he's doing something in the name of the law and blow up the country that's his own country because he never got taught the reality that this is his country. You follow that? When they arrested that blind Sheik, I know why he was mad. I don't understand, his law made him blind, so he's mad at everybody. And I thought he's, uh, he just had the wrong deity. So now he's blind and he's gonna blow up the World Trade Center. And who's with him? When they arrested him, a bunch of Negro Sunni Muslims. How do we know what side they're on? Now Farrakhan has a whole congregation of angry American blacks. Because he can't get a good million dollars out of his million man march. Now he's surrendering over all these human beings to this communist movement. There's the danger. You got your attention in the wrong places. You better look at what's taking place right up under your nose. They're making our Arab army in our country. And the fool Arabs are not succeeding because they're stupid. You only have to live with them and you know how stupid they are. I went to school in Egypt. They're real dumb.